Again, everyone, Mark Blusinch of Hudson County View. Uh, thanks again for joining us on this uh, this week's show, May 28th. Uh, as we uh, have a lot, as we discuss in previous weeks, uh, so much news out of Hudson County. Well, there's a lot of news this week to discuss. In fact, uh, happening right now, um, well, a little bit over about an hour ago, the Gateway Program Development Corporation held a a virtual event to provide the media and individuals with an update on the construction of the Hudson River tunnels between New York and New Jersey. That construction hasn't actually started, but, um, but they gave an update as far as uh, the funding mechanisms uh, that they're trying to get, that they're trying to make available from the federal government as well as state sources. Uh, other stories that we'll be getting to include uh, Monday, I was in Weehawken for a Memorial Day celebration. Now, Hope Weehawken has been celebrating uh, Memorial Day for almost 88 years now, and it's it's done so with parades along Boulevard East, but it hasn't wasn't able to do that this year. Uh, and we'll be getting to a couple stories in Hoboken as well. Uh, there was a promotion, the first ever, uh, the a female captain will be the first ever uh, female firefighter to be uh, promoted to battalion chief, uh, and also uh, a firefighter. Joshua Pinero, uh, who's been a firefighter for many years now as well, will be promoted to uh, captain. Uh, the, we will then get to a discussion about a protest that happened that was organized by Make the Road New Jersey, which protested outside Trump, the Trump Bay Towers in Jersey City uh, last Friday, actually, uh, protesting that the uh, state has not been providing enough resources to especially the immigrant uh, community uh, and also trying to highlight the reason why they protest in front of the Trump Tower was to bring uh, attention to the what they de what they say is a lack of uh, additional stimulus funding from the Trump administration. Now, as we know, the uh, Congress has already authorized about $3 trillion worth of stimulus money in the form of a CARES Act, but the Make the Road New Jersey spokes, uh, spokespersons and organizers said that, well, they want to make sure that the HEROES Act gets uh, uh, gets passed as well, which is calling for another $2 trillion worth of stimulus money. And they're also calling for a uh, rent relief, cancellation of rent, so that uh, low income and Im the immigrant community can uh, receive, can uh, have some relief economically in that, in that uh, regard. Um, and uh, also we'll be, as I said, we'll be talking extensively about the Gateway uh, Development Corporation. Um, the, it's a live stream, it's a uh, press conference or at least virtual press conference that it held at uh, one o'clock and at two o'clock it'll be uh, taking questions from the media but that'll of course be happening while we're live talking with you about all the different stories that have been happening in hope in uh, throughout Hudson County and we'll be getting to those stories right after this commercial break please stay tuned we'll be right back Burns Brothers Memorials Monuments and Markers 787 Tunley Avenue Jersey City Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. The Jersey City Medical Center. You know it for its award-winning, life-saving ambulance service. It's also your health hub. With health and wellness locations staffed with certified professionals all through Hudson County. The Jersey City Medical Center. Here to help you with your healthy. Here when you need us the most. 
to Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the net to learn more. Jersey City Medical Center, Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Facility. Let's be healthy together. Hello again, everyone. Mark Boosnich of Hudson County View. Thanks again for joining us on this newest installment of Hudson County View Live and Uncut. Uh, the first story we want to get to today in this segment is on Monday, I, on Memorial Day, on Monday, I was in uh, along Boulevard East in Weehawken, where town officials led by uh, Weehawken Mayor Richard Turner, as well as the American Legion, members of the American Legion, including uh, its uh, program director, Troy Mack, or executive director, I should say, Troy Mack, who led a solemn celebration of Memorial Day in front of the World War I Memorial along Boulevard East. Now, this type of celebration, obviously, because due to the COVID-19 pandemic, had to be a little bit more solemn, was a little bit more solemn, and had to be a lot smaller than uh, Memorial Day celebrations of years past. Now, Weehawken has been celebrating Memorial Day for almost 88 years, going back to 1932, and they've done a wonderful job in organizing a parade route with different floats and, and also with... Um, uh, members of the military, those who served in the military from Weehawken, and also from other members, uh, other veterans from Hudson County who also participated in the parade in years past. Well, this year they weren't able to do that. Uh, nonetheless, we were there to um, to interview Mayor Richard Turner and Troy Mack to talk about nonetheless the significance of this uh, um, of this celebration this year, which they said not only remembers those who were fallen, uh, those U.S. servicemen and service women who have fallen in service uh, while they've been while they were in service in the armed forces, uh, but also they were paying tribute to uh, the many Americans. Which now, I believe, that as of this morning, there are 102 confirmed 102,000 confirmed cases of of Americans who have died from COVID-19. And they said they wanted to pay tribute to uh, the those Americans who have, who have sadly and tragically died from the virus, uh, including the 20 Weehawken residents that have sadly uh, 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 been deceased from the, as a result of the virus. So let's go to the video interview that we conducted with uh, Weehawken Mayor Richard Turner, as well as Troy Mack. Reporting in Weehawken this morning on this Memorial Day, standing in front of the Veterans Memorial statue here along Boulevard East where Weehawken Mayor Richard Turner was joined by Weehawken members of the American Legion to celebrate this Memorial Day, paying tribute to those American soldiers who gave the ultimate sacrifice in defending the country's freedoms. Arms. Group. Order. Arms. Eddies. A little bit more challenging than uh, previous Memorial Days past, uh, obviously uh, with the coronavirus still going on. Uh, but still, the significance of today was important to be here. Well, yeah, it's one of these uh, um, events that you have to take place in because you have to remember those who gave sacrifice their lives for our country, for our freedoms. Um, normally, as we walk in, has a very large parade. We have a very large ceremony up here. Um, many participants, obviously, because of the coronavirus pandemic, they, that couldn't be done this year. So the American Legion did uh, today's small ceremony. And uh, we also have a virtual ceremony that started at 11 o'clock on all the social media of Weehawken. And then we have a 19-minute uh, uh, remembrance of all the Memorial Days from 1932 on. So um, you do the best you can in the circumstances, but it's also important not only to remember those who sacrificed their lives for us, but also those who serve in the military now, those who serve as first responders, those who serve as essential workers, our, our hospital personnel, um, and also those who lost their lives for the coronavirus. So, so under the circumstances, it's a very nice ceremony, and we look forward to a much bigger and better 2021 and safer. Everybody stay safe and healthy. You know, that what's important for us here is to remember those who are dear to us. And that's both my own and my team's fallen brethren in arms, but also all of our neighbors and all the people we share these streets with every day, and ultimately with whom we share the very democratic principles to which mine and others' brethren in arms gave their life. Uh, this is a blessed day. Sometimes you do rituals, yes, because of the things they can do for us, 
but most of the time you offer rituals because of who we are. And this represents what I hope to be the best of all of us as neighbors, as friends, and as a community here in Weehawken, as well as our neighboring municipalities of West New York, Guttenberg, Union City, and all those Weehawken American Legion Post 18 serves. Mark Boosnich reporting in Weehawken for Hudson County View, the eye of the community. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good friend self storage. Let us be your good friend. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers the quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport, live like you want. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for staying with us during this uh, recent installment of Hudson County View Live and Uncut. I'm Mark Businich. And uh, we want to get to an important story. In fact, at 1 o'clock, we couldn't report on it. We couldn't post the story to our website because at 1 o'clock, uh, and actually happening right now, uh, it's continuing the Gateway Program Development Corporation, which is a bi-state uh, uh, entity, which was created by both New York and New Jersey uh, as a way, as, a, a, as an organization to lobby the federal government to secure billions of dollars, something like maybe up to $15 billion worth, to replace the 109-year-old uh, uh, Hudson River Tunnel that connects North Bergen, New Jersey. That, that's right, the, the foot of the, uh, uh, of the Gateway t or the old tunnel, the, the Hudson River Tunnel, sits right in North Bergen, and uh, the the Gateway Program Development Corporation wants to build two brand new tunnels, uh, and that would connect into New York's Penn Station. Now, as I said, the current tunnel is 109 years old, and it's part of what's called the Northeast Corridor, right? So it's uh, it's one of the it's the busiest passenger train route in all of uh, North America, connecting. Uh, Washington, D.C., to through Boston, obviously, and a major hub being New York's Penn Station. Now, at 1 o'clock, the uh, Gateway Program Development Corporation held a virtual webinar to provide some updates as far as where it stands in securing uh, the dollars, the critically, the uh, uh, billions of dollars that it needs to be able to uh, start the any type of construction on building out a new tunnel. Now, this has been going on for many years now. We've, in fact, Hudson County View has reported on this for the last couple of years. But the the effort and the um, the effort and also the plan to to build out the new tunnels have been on the books now for quite a while. But up to now, it's been very difficult to get the needed federal funding. So uh, to uh, in fact. Uh, just uh, or just two days, or just yesterday, in fact, New York's governor, Andrew Cuomo, met with U.S. President Donald Trump to talk about how one way to jumpstart the region's economy, including New Jersey, would be to, uh, uh, to fund big infrastructure projects. And one of those big infrastructure projects that, uh, that New York Governor uh, Andrew Cuomo highlighted to President Trump would be to make sure that the Gateway Program Development Corporation gets the needed federal dollars that it needs to at least start construction. In fact, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy held a press conference right at the uh, Sea Caucus train junction, train hall, uh, just a few months ago, also calling on the federal government to, um, uh, to provide the needed uh, dollars. Now, because 
state money, the states are willing to fund at least half of that. New, New York and New Jersey combined are willing to fund up to half of the construction costs on the new tunnel, but they obviously need their federal partners to, uh, to fund the rest of that. Now, there was also um, some news this week where part of the, part of the gateway program also uh, uh, includes the replacement of the portal bridge, which uh, connects uh, Hudson County or or, or rather is a bridge over the Hackensack River just past the Seacaucus train junction, Seacaucus train hall, I should say. And there was some good news uh, regarding this week, the New, uh, New Jersey delegation, congressional delegation, and, sen and senator uh, delegation both announced $100 million in funding to replace the uh, Portal Bridge project. Now, again, that that bridge is also just about as old as the uh, Hudson River Tunnel. As I said, the Hudson River Tunnel now is about 109 years old, and uh, the uh, Porto Bridge is about 105 years old. So there was some good news this week. Uh, we have to get to our next commercial break, so please be sure as we, when we get back from commercial, we'll be going to Hoboken. Most women who give birth recover without problems, but any woman can have complications after the birth of a baby. Learn the post-birth warning signs, such as fever, headache, chest pain, shortness of breath, increased bleeding, or thoughts of hurting yourself or someone else. Knowing these can save your life or the life of someone that you love. Trust your instincts. If you feel something is wrong, call and get evaluated by your healthcare provider. If your symptoms get worse or you do not hear back from your physician, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Hannah Pinto Properties, Jersey City. Shape in the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces that address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521 9000 or visit online at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Hello again, everyone. Mark Boosnich of Hudson County View. Uh, thanks again for participating with us on this May 28th show, our last show for May. Uh, our next installment, our next segment, we'll be discussing a protest, a rally that took place outside a Trump uh, Tower building in Jersey City, which is owned by the Kushner companies. Of course, many of you know Jared Kushner, who is a senior advisor and son-in-law of U.S. President Donald Trump. You could see him there in the, uh, in, well, in my upper left-hand corner frame. And uh, Make the Road New Jersey held a, a, again, a protest and a rally, and they simulated body bags, uh, body bags by filling up garbage bags with material to simulate what they say are those persons, those uh, persons in the, uh, who are low-income communities and the immigrant communities throughout New Jersey, Patterson, Passaic, Jersey City as well, which have uh, high immigrant communities, are um, not getting the necessarily not, are not getting the necessary funding that they need to be able to uh, to realize economic relief from what is now going into the third month of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, they say that uh, the uh, the original stimulus funding, which was in the form of the CARES Act, $2 trillion worth, still is not enough to provide the necessary unemployment insurance. And also they're calling for rent cancellation so that they could also have immediate economic relief uh, in, that as, in that regard. So uh, we want, we have footage, uh, John Hines, uh, Hudson County View's uh, chief uh, senior correspondent, chief correspondent, was at the rally last Friday, and let's go to that video as, they, as he captured some great footage of the event. Make the Road New Jersey led a rally and protest in front of the Trump Bay Street building in Jersey City this morning, calling for red protections and other forms of relief for the undocumented communities across the Garden State, as well as having some choice words for President Donald Trump and his senior advisor, Jared Kushner. Um, this, is, this, right, this building has Donald Trump's name, um, but it's actually a Kushner property. Um, and so, as you know, Jared Kushner is a disaster advisor for the Trump administration. Um, and so we came today to sort of call out the failure of the Trump administration. He hired cronies to sort of serve as advisors, made sure to have bailouts for the rich, 
Um, meanwhile, um, there are more than two, more than half a million people in New Jersey um, that have gone without relief for more than 80 days. What do you think would be the appropriate uh, action to be taken at this point from D.C.? Yeah, so um, two things. Um, there's currently the HEROES Act just passed out of the House um, last week. Um, the Senate could pass the HEROES Act, which would include ITIN holders um, and make many more families eligible for stimulus here in New Jersey. Um, at the state level, there's a lot that can be done. A couple of weeks ago, Make the Road released a report called Essential and included the first of its kind in New Jersey that interviewed more than 200 immigrants throughout the state. Um, we could create a disaster relief fund at the state level. We could stop deportations. We could create a DACA renewal fund. Um, there are other ways that both the state can take action while we wait on the federal government, and the federal government can go ahead, the Senate can go ahead and pass the HEROES Act. And now, this particular building, as you can see, the management isn't uh, particularly happy with this uh, event. They're saying that this is a condo building and no one actually rents here. I mean, what's your reaction to that? Okay, so right, I think um, maybe, the, maybe the messaging needs to be clearer, right? So we're not talking about canceling. We're, we're, of course, when we talk about canceling the rent, it would benefit all people. But our biggest concern is canceling the rent for communities, Im strong immigrant communities, right? Communities in Patterson, Passaic, right? It doesn't really matter if they rent or it's condominium buildings. It is owned by Kushner Properties, and Kushner Properties is advising the president, and Kushner Properties is making it a priority for themselves to make money off the backs of people who can't afford the rent. I'm John Heides with the Hudson County View. The Eye of the Community. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down. That's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lindhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. You know those times when you need to see the doctor, but you just can't get to the doctor? So where do you go? Go to the App Store, download the Telemed app from RWJ Barnabas Health, and you see the doctor right away. From any mobile device, whenever you want, wherever you are. Quality care, no appointment necessary. The doctor is online when you download the Telemed app. Don't you feel better already? RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Hello again, everyone. Mark Booth, Central Hudson County View. Uh, hopefully, hope uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the last video segment. Uh, Chief News Correspondent uh, John Hines reporting from Jersey City outside a uh, a Trump-owned building in Jersey City uh, last Friday. Uh, we want to uh, move up north a little bit in Hudson County to uh, Hoboken, where there was a a a, a promotion uh, of a captain, uh, Audra Carter, who's been with the Hoboken Fire Department for 18 years. And she was a firefighter for 10 years and then served as captain uh, since 2011. Well, just this week, she was promoted to a battalion, uh, fire battalion chief, which makes her the first female battalion chief in, in Hoboken. So it makes it marks a milestone in the Hoboken Fire Department's history. Uh, and she received uh, congratulatory and accolades from Hoboken officials, including Hoboken Mayor Ravi Bala and members of the city council, including uh, Emily Jabour and the uh, council president as well, Jen Giatino, um, and also promoted uh, another pr another firefighter who was promoted uh, was uh, Joshua Pinero, who um, who was uh, w w has been with the fire department for a number of years as well, and he will now be promoted as a captain. So he'll be taking the place of uh, Audrey Carter, is who's the uh, the female battalion chief who's been promoted. Uh, now Joshua Pinero will be uh, moved, uh, will be promoted to captain, and uh, Audra Carter takes the place of of William Ro Rosemester, who was battalion chief for 26 years, a long time. He served, uh, provided public service for a long time in Hoboken, as I said, up to 26 years, and now he will be uh, retiring, and so therefore that's why Audra Carter was just recently promoted to replace him as Hoboken's newest. Uh, battalion chief. So uh, we uh, we congratulate her on her promotion and for being the first female battalion chief in the city's history. Now, also in Hoboken, another important news development in the Mile Square City has to do with the Hoboken Board of Education passing its budget a few weeks ago, an 83.8, approximately 84 million dollar uh, Board of Education 
uh, budget, uh, which will uh, which will uh, include a tax, which includes a, an increase on uh, an increase in the tax levy by almost 10 percent. So, for example, in uh, last year's uh, Hoboken Board of Education budget was about 78 uh, three million, 78 point three million dollars, and it had a uh, a school tax levy tax local taxes that were that were collected from residents that contributed to the Board of Education's budget was about $48 million in 2019. This year, because of the increase of the school tax levy, uh, Hoboken residents can expect to pay total collection of ta and, and taxes for uh, which will amount to about $52 uh, million. Um, <clears throat> now also the, that funding uh, that the Board of Education passed will also go towards, not only towards the K uh, through 12 uh, public schools, uh, which will, they said, in fact, the Board of Education said they need to increase the school tax levy because there'll be an increase in enrollment from about 2,000 students last year in its K through 12 school, uh, school, school district, uh, and that uh, student body will increase to about 2,500 students. And also they said it was necessary to increase the uh, school tax levy because the city will be experiencing a, a a state aid cut from from the state that is in the form of about eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Now that's uh, similar to, or at least a state aid cut is also true of uh, Hoboken's uh, southern neighbor, Jersey City, which also is experiencing, and we reported extensively on the numerous uh, <clears throat> numerous extensive um, cuts in state aid. Uh, so Hoboken said that it'll need to. Uh, raise its school tax levy to um, to be able to cover that cost. So, but also included it, well, the schools, not only the public schools, but the charter schools will also be able to uh, realize uh, the increase in funding as well, which includes uh, the Hoboken Charter School, the Elysian Charter School, and the uh, whole lot uh, dual char language charter school. All three charter schools in Hoboken will be able to um, uh, we'll be able to realize, uh, we'll be, get resources from this increase in the school tax levy in the budget that the Hoboken Board of Education uh, passed. Now, we just want to, in our, like, we have about three minutes left before the show ends, and we just want to talk about some news coming out of the uh, Path, so, uh, path uh, uh, Port Authority, Trans Hudson, uh, the Path train system, I should say, the bi state uh, train uh, system. Uh, which connects obviously Jersey City to Lower Manhattan and also from uh, Hoboken to uh, 33rd Street in Manhattan. And the, the workers there said that they, the union represented by their union are a little bit upset with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey because they claim that um, after they were insisting that the, that the uh, bi-state agency uh, start testing its workers, about a thousand workers, uh, total in the PAD system, start testing them to, find, to make sure that they were free of the uh, COVID-19, uh, uh, they were free of COVID-19 or the coronavirus, I should say. Well, they said that in response to their insistence that the, the, that the agency uh, perform this type of testing, the agency then turned around and said that now only the workers will not only have 10 days if they indeed are discovered to have the, indeed to be to have the coronavirus, they will only have 10 days allotted by the company to recover. And if they, therefore, if they need more days than that, they would have to then use up their sick time and their own personal sick time and their own vacation time. And some mem some workers worry that it might even eat into their paycheck if they were to be out longer than 10 days. So we want to thank everyone who joined us on this May 28th, the last show in May 2020 for this latest installment of Hudson County View Live in a Cut. We'll be back again next week. Thanks for tuning in.